deliver. Thank you, God, because you are our Savior. We worship you, Father. We lift up your name. You are greater than the greatest. You are better than the best. You are higher than the highest. You are the Almighty God, the God that was never created, the Creator that was never created. We give you praise. We worship you, Daddy. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for what you have said to me now. May your name alone be praised. Yeah. We commit to God the remaining part of the service, Lord, in your hand. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you speak to me. Amen. Bless your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. As many that are under the unction of my voice this morning, Lord, as we begin to look at your word, let healing begin to take place. Amen. Let deliverance begin to take Amen. place. Amen. Let transformation begin to take Amen. place. Wherever they may be, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Distance is not a barrier. Daddy, I pray, Heavenly Father, as we open your word this morning, as we read through the scriptures, Lord, as we, as we, as we talk about you, let miracles begin to happen. Amen. Let your angel be this pastor, Lord. Daddy, to bring comfort to your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, King of glory. May your name alone be praised. Jesus, mighty man, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take our seat. Hallelujah. It's awesome this morning. Hallelujah. Praise him, the Lord will bless you. That will be great one. Hallelujah. Pray that the Lord will take you to places in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray the power of God come down while they were ministering. And I believe that the Lord has started doing something. Hallelujah. And I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see the evidence of what he has done, even this morning in the name of Jesus. I pray for as many that have a burden in their hearts. This morning, the Lord will lift those burdens. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome to a wonderful Sunday like this, the 15th day of May 2022. Hallelujah. So this morning, I'm going to be looking at the topic before me says spiritual battles are inevitable. Spiritual battles are inevitable. Praise God. Hallelujah. Or better still, battles are inevitable, whether spiritual or physical. As believers, if there's anyone that has told you that once you give your life to Jesus, it's a free ticket that battles will not come, it's a lie. Hallelujah. The battles that are coming, battles that have been won by our Savior Jesus already. Hallelujah. That's the one that's what makes the difference because you are fighting a battle that has been won already. Victory is short. Hallelujah. When you have that at the back of your mind, you are sure that you come as victoriously in the name of Jesus. Let's look at the scripture in the book of Ephesians 6 10 to 18. Spiritual battles are inevitable. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. The Bible says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his man. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wives of the devil. Verse 12 said, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual rules of wickedness, in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. 13. Therefore, take up the whole act of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, 14 says, stand therefore, having guided your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shored your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the sheet of it with which you will be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. 17 said, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. 18, he said, pray always with all prayers, supplication in the spirit. Be watchful to this end with all perseverance, supplication for all saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each time I go through this scripture, 
I remind myself that battles are real. And the day you confess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you are noted in hell, in hell as an enemy. But thank God for Jesus, that Jesus has won the victory. And that is the battle that we are fighting. And the scripture that we have just read told us that we need the helmet of salvation. It means that for believers to actually win this battle that has been won already, you need to be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Battle is the struggle for authority by people, by nation. It is the struggle or to resist something. Say, for example, when sickness is battling with your good health, it is a battle. It's struggling. So many infections coming to attack all the antibodies. It's calling for authority. You want to take authority. You want to be in charge of that body. But I pray for everyone who is sick under the portion of members this morning. Whatsoever that is contending in your health, that want to take authority over you, whatsoever the name of that sickness, I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they are close to their roots in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus has obtained that authority for you. You do not need to remain in sickness. Authority has been given to Jesus over that affliction, over that sickness. Hallelujah. Spiritual battles, therefore, is the spiritual struggle of authority by spiritual powers in every place. We read that in Ephesians 6, verse 12. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against rulers of darkness in heavenly places. These are spiritual battles. The devil is not happy that you have left the camp of the enemy. Because that is where you were before you gave your life to Jesus. Praise God. You used to work for the devil. You used to commit sin, all manner of sin, fornication, adultery, stealing, lies, backbiting, unforgiveness, maliciousness, greed, and all manner of evil, embezzlement of hope, murder, all manner of evil. But now you have become, you have seen the light of God. You think that the devil will be happy? No. He will look for everything to frustrate your effort and want to bring you back. Hallelujah. Amen. Some part of the world, some people work in, I don't want to mention it, they work in a certain organization. And if they want to frustrate you, they will do everything to frustrate you because they have demanded bribe from you and you have refused to pay the bribe. They will do everything to frustrate you so that you come back to them and ask, and he will pay the bribe, the, the bribe and pay more. And that is how it is with the devil. The devil will do everything. But I want to assure you this morning that victory is short. Mm -hmm. Jesus has received the victory on the cross of Calvary, and that is what we have as believers. Hallelujah. So what do we need to do? Because these battles are inevitable as believers. We need to prepare. We need to prepare as Christians. Show me a man who is not prepared. Shame and reproach will be the order of the day. We need to prepare. Hallelujah. Let's take a clue from the Bible. The book of Genesis 14, 14 to 16. Where... Abraham trained his 318 servants. He began to prepare them just in case. And eventually happened that his brother Lot was taking a captive. Genesis 6, 14, verse 14 to 16. Eventually, his brother was taken as captive. Then those 318 servants that Abraham trained became very relevant to him. If he did not prepare this man, tell me, how he, would he be able to confront this great army that came against him, took his brother captive? How will he be able to deliver 
his brother that has been head captain. You need to prepare. Hallelujah. You need to prepare. If you look at the book of First Samuel chapter 17, between David and Goliath, Goliath was terrorizing the Philistines. They were terrorizing the children of God for so many years. They were terrorizing them on a daily basis. That giant would come and threaten them. I said, if you are bold enough, send someone to me, and I'm going to kill him. Hallelujah. They became very scared. I thank God for David. I want to believe that David had prepared. He taught, he taught, he went, probably went to learn how to shoot his sling with a stone. He learned that and prepared. That was why he had the courage and the confidence to face the giant who has so many war armor on him. A man who has been trained for war compared to David who wasn't trained for war, but he had a sling and a stone in his hand. And that was what brought down the giant that had been fighting the children of Israel. I prophesy into the life of everyone listening to me and looking at me right now that every giant, every pharaoh who by the life, the power of God is going to bring them down now in the name of Jesus. Every giant that is claiming ownership of your life, every giant that comes to terrorize you on a daily basis in the form of affliction, in the form of poverty, in the form of delay, and end has come to that giant in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the order that David brought down Goliath, I pray by the unction of the Holy Ghost upon my life, let the power of God bring them down now. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever that has troubled you, whatsoever that has threatened your existence, whatsoever power that is confronting your family, confronting your children, confronting your spouse, your finances, your ministry, that has threatened you day and night, the power of God is hitting that power right yes. and destroying that power. In the name of Jesus, yes. every power that has come to pollute your destiny through the night, every power that has come to have sex with you, every power that has come to feed you in your dream, every power that has come to do evil manner and planted evil inside of you when you sweat, today mark the end of that time in the name of Jesus. Yes. I come against your power by the authority in the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12, 11, the Bible said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. By the blood of Jesus, we come against your power in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Brethren, you need to prepare. How can you prepare? Hallelujah. How do you prepare? It's more than just giving your life to Jesus. You need to prepare. The Bible said in the book of one, Psalm 144, verse 1, it said, Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Psalm 144, verse 1. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trained my hand for war and my fingers for battle. Brethren, we need to prepare. We need to prepare, train our hands for war. We need to learn to fight spiritual battles. Spiritual battles are won with spiritual instruments, not with physical instruments. Hallelujah. I was watching a program last night, and the, the lady had a dream that someone was strangling her in the dream. And she woke up and went to the son's family and began to fight against the, the, the wives, the, the, that's the, the in law to, 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 to the son. The mother in law to the son began to exchange blows. And inside of me, I was just telling my wife, I said, No, spiritual battles are part of spiritual things. This is a physical fact. She has lost it already. Hallelujah. You need to do this on your knees. You need to do this in prayer. You need to do this in holiness. You need to do this in perseverance, persistently in prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. How do you prepare your hands for war? You need to make Jesus your friend, accepting him as your Lord and Savior, and obey his commandment in totality. 
That is one of the ways you can prepare for war. You can prepare for these battles that are going to come. They are going to come. If you call yourself a believer, a true child of God, battles are going to come. Hallelujah. But don't be scared of these battles because they've been won already. If you can do this that I'm telling you right now, you give your life to Jesus, you begin to walk with him and know him. Philippians 3, verse 10, Apostle Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable to his death. You begin to walk to know him. Tell me your friend, how close you are to die your friend. And I can tell what relationship you have with such a friend. You cannot claim to be a friend of Jesus and you do not obey his command. Look at what the Bible says in John 15, verse 14. It says, you are my friend if you do whatever I command you. John 15, 14. You are my friend if you do what I command you. Hallelujah. And if you do not do that, then you are no, not a friend to Jesus. I want to believe that everyone under the function of my voice this morning who have not known Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, you begin to make him your friend, a true friend indeed. The Bible said, greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his true friend. It's only when you are a friend to Jesus that you can win these battles of life. It is only when you are praying to him, you know him, you seek to know him, that you can win the battles of life, whether spiritual or physical. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 28, verse 10. The Bible said, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Tell me, someone whose power and authority have been given to the power and authority to control principalities and powers, the head of all principalities, if you make him your friend, tell me who is that power that can actually have victory over you. It's impossible. I remember I was watching the program some, some few weeks ago, and I saw this girl was jumping up because the boyfriend said to her, to her, I'm going to join court. And another friend was asking her, why did, why did you do that? I said, I need protection. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I was like, if this is the reason you are doing this, we have a board who has more authority, who can give you more protection. Hallelujah. And that is whom you need to seek, not human. If you put your trust in man, you will fail. If you make Jesus your friend and go close to him and do his bidding, there is no power because all authority, they are under him. There is no truth, no occultic power, no demonic power, no witchcraft coven will be able to triumph over you. They may try, but each time they call your name, the fire of God is going to speak, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to declare over everyone under the function of my God that in every coven where you have been held back, every spiritual coven where you have been held back, every demonic influence, sickness that brought your life, your destiny, that of your spouse, of your children, today an end has come to that affliction. In the name of Jesus. Because you will make Jesus your friend. Who is the head of all principality? Hallelujah. No power can hold you back anymore. Colossians 2, verse 10, the Bible says, and you are complete in it. Who is the head of all principalities and power? You are complete in him. If you know him, if you do his bidding, if you give your life to him, you do his will, obey his commandment, and love the people of God, love his work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next thing that you need to do for you to prepare is to live a holy life. A holy life creates intimacy with God. It builds your spiritual strength and stability. Psalm 15, verse 1 to 5. Psalm 16, Psalm 15, sorry. 
Psalm chapter 15, verse 1 to 5. The Bible says, Lord, who may enter your temple? Who may worship on Zion? Your sacred heal. Those who obey God in everything always do what is right. I'm reading really from the Good News Translation. Hallelujah. He said, whose words are true and sincere. I want you to take note of this scripture. Whose words are true and sincere. It means those that do not say lies. And who do not slander others. They do not wrong. They do no wrong to their friends. Nor spread rumors about their neighbor. They despise those who God rejects. But honor those who obey the Lord. They always do what they promise, no matter how much it may cost. They make loans without having interest and cannot be brought to testify against the innocent. Whoever does these things will always be secure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you must live a holy life. You must live a holy life and create that intimacy with your maker. That is another way we can prepare for this battle. Once we have that intimacy with God, God is said to open our eyes and discuss with you like a father discuss with a child. Hallelujah. And you begin to ask God some questions and God will respond to you because you are a child to him. You are a true son. You are a true daughter. A daughter who does what pleases him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So make this work your companion. That is the last one we're going to look at. You need to make him, make his work your companion and obey his work. First John 5, 2 to 3. First John 5, 2 to 3. I'm reading from the um, New King James Version. The Bible said, by this, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandment, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandment, and his commandment are not what is so. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then the last one is to pray without season. Pray all manner of prayers. First Thessalonians 5.17 said, pray without season. All the time. Ekasoko devachi. All the time, begin to stop in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I remember some, some few years ago, I was walking somewhere. And during my break time, I usually do prayer work. And um, someone who recruited me, um, she's an African, and she met me one day. From that, that, that trust. And she said to me, he said, Richard, I usually see you walking and you are talking to yourself. I said, she doesn't do understand. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, it's all well. Now you are living. You just came not up to 10 months. You've only done nine months with us. Now you are living. Is everything okay? She thought something is wrong with me. Hallelujah. Pray at all time. Make prayer a part of you. And you see God begin to walk with you. Hallelujah. And God will begin to take away all of these battles and make way for you. If there's anyone God has not taken away, he has a reason. He wants to prepare that testimony and remove all those that would have rebelled against the testimony. Hallelujah. I pray this morning. The Lord is going to fight our battles in the name of Jesus. I want us to be on our feet. And we're going to pray. But before you do that, I want to just mention Two things that happen when you do not prepare. You will suffer defeat and failure. I pray we will not suffer defeat. Shame and reproach will be evident. The devil will triumph. Death physical. And every battle confronting my life. Put an end to it today by your mercy. Lord, arise your mercy. Put an end to every challenge, every battle that I'm going through, Lord, today. Put an end to it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, put an end to it today. Put an end to it today. 
Father, I pray for your children as they are praying right now. Every battle that from their life, as you give them the grace, Lord, to prepare. A soko de bade kakuki da badeka. Zaka de bo uke di ka de bodo bade. Every spiritual battle, every physical battle that confronted anyone under the function of my God. Lord, I pray to you, Lord, as your son, and declare an end to the existence of that ambition. In the name of Jesus, every struggle of life, everything that has caused pain to this one, Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. If you are there, you are not born again. I want you to give your life to Jesus. Say this word after me so that Jesus will begin to give you victory. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for this privilege, even to come back to you. I am a sinner. I realize I need you more than you need me. Father, have mercy on me. Forgive my sin. Give me the power to sin no more. Write my name in the book of life. And delete my name from the book of hell. Help me, O oh God, to sustain this salvation and this decision that I'm taking. In Jesus, my name, I have made this confession. Amen. Congratulations to you if you have just made that confession. But I'll make sure you live in London environment. I want to invite you to join us. The details of our church will be on the screen. Join us and fellowship with us. And as you do so, come and see what God is doing in our midst. Invite someone to come with you. As you do so, the Lord bless you richly. In Jesus' mighty name. I want you to raise up your offering wherever you may be for those of you that are here. Father, I talk about those offerings in the pool of the blood of Jesus. I pray heavenly Father, you are suffering. Accept all those that are given in the name of Jesus. Even the ones that have not to give, I pray, Lord Jesus, you cause favor to shine upon them. You will provide for them in the name of Jesus. Wherever they have laid all us before them, Daddy, let an end come to that struggle. For those that are giving their life, their tax, Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, increase the 90% in their hands. In the name of Jesus, for those that have not to give, Lord, provide a job for them. Provide something for them to do so that they can give to the gospel and give to your work in Jesus' name. And I pray for us as a church, the grace to be able to use this, oh God, for the good propagation of your word here. Give unto us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Asian of this. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. If you are blessed this morning, for those of you that are online, send us email. Hallelujah. Send us a text. You can call us. And uh, we are happy. Send us a prayer request. And we'll be praying for you. The Lord lead us. We will come to share testimony. Let's turn the grace. Fellowship and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. Fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy is following me. All the days of my life, I am dwelling in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'll see you again on Thursday. God willing. Have a wonderful week ahead of you. Amen. Have you?